My name is J.M.D. Mateus, and I am the author of Imaginalis. When I think of the adventures that have had the most impact on my life, I think of the adventures that I either read or saw when I was a, a little kid. Stories like The Wizard of Oz or Peter Pan or Pinocchio that impacted my imagination and I think really affected my worldview. But the one adventure I think of anything that I saw as a kid that affected me more than anything was the old TV show The Twilight Zone. Because in The Twilight Zone it wasn't about going away somewhere to a magical land or going over the rainbow or off to Neverland. It was, it was right here. Regular normal people here in the so-called everyday world experiencing magic and mystery and wonder and sometimes terror. But it, 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 it showed me that the world is far more than what we take it to be. And that, that really did help to shape my view of the world as a person and as a writer. So to this day, The Twilight Zone echoes through my life and it's always been a part of me. I think the greatest adventure I've ever been on was my first trip to India. I've been to India eight times over the years and it's always been a spectacular adventure but the first time I had never been out of the country before and I traveled by myself so to travel across the world to a place as strange and wonderful uh, as India was really something and it really was sort of like uh, going to Oz or to Mars or to another planet but the, the best part of the adventure was that it was not just an outer adventure it was an inner adventure it was an adventure that opened up the doors uh, to my own heart and to my own soul and, and impacted the way that I see myself and that I see the universe. So, And those are the kind of adventures that stay with you. And that was truly one of the greatest adventures I ever had. The inspiration for Imaginalis actually came from a, a, a previous book series that I was writing. It was a series that we had planned to run for at least eight books and we were really aiming for 12. And it was a series that I had nursed along for many, many years. I was really, really invested in the story and the world and the characters. In fact, those characters were not characters to me. They were completely real. And um, just a few books into the series, we got the word that for a variety of reasons, uh, it was canceled. So there we were in the middle of this story, our characters in the middle of their quest, and they were just gone in a puff of smoke. And I actually was uh, very, very upset by that, devastated, in fact. And um, I was laying in bed one day thinking about this and thinking the thing that, that really uh, hurt me most of all was that these characters that had become such dear friends of mine were trapped. They were trapped mid-story. They were trapped in limbo somewhere. They couldn't move forward and neither could I. And if only there was some way I could, I could get there and rescue them. And, and all of a sudden a little light bulb went off in my head and I said, characters trapped in limbo, that is a fantastic idea for the story. And I literally ran out of bed, ran into my office and, and in the course of a day wrote the outline for the story that would become uh, Imaginalis. So out of the destruction of one uh, fantasy world came the birth of another, and that's how this story was born. I always start a story with a real sense of, of, of who the characters are and a, and, a, and a fairly solid outline of where the story is going to go. But the, a truth I learned a long, long time ago is that just has to be a scaffolding. Because once you start writing, if 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 you're doing your job correctly, your job is really to get out of the way and let those characters speak to you and speak through you and really take on a life of their own. So yes, I had a sense of, of who these characters were going to be uh, before I started writing, but once I did, they all evolved into something far more than my original conception of them. And, and, uh, and that's, that's the great fun of writing because then the characters come along and they do things that you didn't plan and surprise you and, and upend the whole story and you're just sort of running along trying to catch up with them and, and to me there's nothing more fun in creating a story than having that story take on a life of its own and just start running. If I was going to take one of the characters from Imagine Alice with me on an adventure, I think the character I would take uh, would be uh, Lord Gnosis, also uh, called Uncle Gnosis. He's sort of the the, the sage, the great uh, wise figure, the, the Merlin, but he really has his roots more in, in Indian mysticism, in, a, in, a, in a, an Indian god named Ganesha, an elephant-headed god. So he's a little bit Ganesha, a little bit Merlin, and a little bit of everybody's favorite uncle. He's uh, incredibly wise, he's got a wonderful uh, sense of humor, and he's the kind of guy you'd really want with you and watching your back while you were going off into some dangerous territory facing uh, unknown adversary. So I would absolutely take a Lord Gnosis with me on my adventure anytime.